The awesome stock history function is finally here for all Excel 365 users. You can use it to get historical stock prices, currency exchange rates, and even exchange traded fund values and use it for your data analysis. Let's take a look at it. To use the stock history function, you need to have a symbol code. This is the code that your stock exchange uses to refer to the particular company or the stock. So for example, here I have the company name Reliance, which is one of the largest companies in India. And let's go and get the stock history for Reliance for, uh, for the month of March, 2021. So you will go say stock history, point to the symbol and then specify the start date. So in our case, the start date would be 1 March 2021. You can type this date in double quotes. You can point to a cell that has the date. Alternatively, you can also use one of the date formulas. And the end date shall be today. Uh, so it will give me all the values up until today from 1 March 2021. As of recording this video, we are still in March. So this is technically all right and you can specify the interval that you want. So for example, I want the daily prices of that. And let's say close that. And this is then going to get into the busy mode. At that point, Excel will contact the data source um, and then get the stock details for us. So let's just expand this and see the prices. And you can see the price has moved from 2,101 rupees to 2,130. 37 rupees in the first 12 days of March. You can use this function to, um, you know, change pretty much everything. For example, I don't want to see it by day. I want to just see it by weekly. I will get the prices for um, every Monday. So 1 March and then 8th of March. Stock history is one of those functions which will return a bunch of values depending on how many dates you specify. So this also relies on the newly introduced spill behavior in Microsoft Excel, wherein because there are more values, Excel will take the first cell and then it will automatically spill all the values. Now that we have seen the detail here, let's go ahead and see some examples that are more interesting. I'm going to enter the code TCS. This is uh, the very first company that I worked after finishing all my studies. So I want to see how their stock price has changed in the year 2020. So we will go and say stock history TCS and then specify the start date. So I'll say 1 Jan uh, 2020 and the end date is today. And I, I don't need to see all the dates. So we'll just say get me the monthly interval and you, there are multiple other parameters for stock history that you could use. You can omit the header. So if you don't want to see the date and close, you can omit that. Uh, for now, I will just say show the header. And then for properties, I want to see date, open price and closed price. So number two is open, number one is closed. So you can specify what you want and this will again get into busy and then you will get the both open and close prices for TCS. Now when I wrote this function I thought the prices will come in Indian currency for the TCS stock listed in Indian market but turns out TCS stock is also listed in other exchanges. So here we are getting the prices from uh, probably the US exchange. So if you want you can specify the correct code by including the exchange symbol. So for example, I want to see the TCS price as per the NSC exchange. So I'll say XNSC colon TCS. So if you specify it like that, you are asking Excel to go and get the price uh, of that stock as listed in the stock exchange NSC. These are all the countries and the currency markets, the uh, stock markets that are supported as of today. Uh, by the Excel stock exchange stock history function. So you can go ahead and read the codes and use them. For example, in India, you can get the prices from Bombay Stock Exchange and National Stock Exchange with the codes XBOM and XNSC. And for example, in USA, you have uh, all of these options, NASDAQ and then NASDAQ stock market, New York Stock Exchange, 
Now let's go ahead and examine another use of stock, uh, stock history to get the currency exchange rate between two currencies. So for example, I want to see how much currency exchange rate is between USD and INR. So I can specify the currency codes like this and then say stock history, that's my stock code. I want to uh, get the fluctuations since the start of this year. Now you can again type the date, but let's go ahead and uh, uh, create the date through a function. So 2021, one and one, that's my start date and date is today. And we'll just close the brackets. This is going to get us the currency exchange rate fluctuations between USD and INR. Uh, and because INR is at the end, it's going to show me how much is one USD worth in Indian rupees. Now you can take all of this data and then you can kind of turn this into a graph. You can see the fluctuations of the currency rate uh, or you can plug this into some other analysis for your follow-up work. So this is how the stock history function works. So now that you have understood the stock history function, let's go and put this into a practical use. Let us say you have decided to get into stock markets and invest money on a regular basis. Every month you are planning to invest some money. So here is a typical investment plan. These two companies you have been investing since 1 Jan 2019, Asian Paint and TCS you have added since 2020. So every month you have been putting that much money, what is your current investment worth? How many shares do you have in each of those companies and how much money do you really have? You could use stock history to calculate that. Now the things to keep in mind when you are using stock history function is it can only get the price of the share as of market open or close or it can also get the high and low values of the stock on, on a given particular interval so it could be day week or month but at the time of purchase you might have bought it from slightly less or slightly more depending on what was the price at that exact point when you purchased so you can't really get that history because it's not available at minute or second interval so use this more as a guidance rather than an accurate analysis of your data also the other thing to keep in mind is many times when you are purchasing stocks or mutual funds there is a concept of additional charges levied by your broker. So they may charge um, 10 cents or $5 or $30 or 300 rupees per every investment. Now, none of those will be taken into consideration when you are using stock history. So you just have to add all of those things on top of this. So I'll show you the basics and then I'll show you the completed data. A workbook and you can also download that for your reference from the video description. In order for me to know how many stocks I'm able to buy, how many shares I'm able to buy uh, on a monthly basis for my investment, I need to first get the prices of every month and then from there on I can go and um, divide the 3000 rupees with the price of the share to know how many shares I was able to purchase. Uh, including full and partial shares. Another key thing to keep in mind is these are the symbols, but some of these stocks may be listed in other exchanges in the world as well. So you may want to qualify them with the exchange code as well. So I will say um, with exchange and then you will just add XMSC at the beginning ampersand that value so that we will get the correct values here. So once this is there, let's go ahead and get the prices of Infosys uh, company from 1 Jan 2019 up until um, 1 March 2021. So I can use stock history. That's my stock. This is the starting date for my analysis and the end date is 1 March 2021. And then interval is monthly. And I do not want any header, we just want the prices. So we don't, we don't want any header. Also, we don't want the date or anything. We just want the closing price. So we'll assume that the purchase has happened as of the close of the market. So just want to see the close price. And we will get the prices 
for every month like this so this has 27 months that's how many months you have been investing now this is going down if i want to for my analysis it needs to go sideways we can then take all of this data and then send it to the transpose function that will go sideways i'm going to just align this so you can see transpose stock history so that stock history comes and then it gets transposed one price per column for every day so this is my 1 jan 2019 price that's my 1 feb 1 march 1 april like that that's the price now these are the prices so how many units am i able to purchase we just take the 3000 that we are investing every month and then divide that sorry take the 3000 absolute reference and divide this with that and then turn this into a number so on that month we are able to get four shares and then you could see that in total you would have purchased every month if you put in 3000 rupee you would have purchased a total of 97.76 shares of infosys so you can take that information and then you can take the very last price to multiply that to see what is the current value of your investment so here is a very very simple portfolio tracker with that kind of a monthly investment plan so we say 3000 rupees every month since 1 jan 2019 the number of total shares that you would have bought would be 97.76 and the latest price as of 12th march of 2021 is 1375 rupees so you can take this and then multiply with that to get the total value of your investment and then this is how much you have actually invested so 81,000 rupees because every month you're putting 3,000 and you've been doing this for 27 months and your profit or loss is that much which as a percentage of your investment is 66 percent so this is how you can use the stock history function i hope you enjoyed the stock history function demo and my first impressions uh, take a look at it by using it in your Excel 365 and tell me in comments how you're planning to use it for your financial well-being. See you again in another video. Bye-bye.